Shane Sparks, Big Ten Network Wrestling, and it is a pleasure to be joined by Michael Caliendo. He's in Iowa, 165-pound starter for the Hawkeyes last year, an All-American seventh-place finish at North Dakota State. Michael, great to see you. I wanted to ask you, what is your first memory of wrestling, and how did you get involved in the sport? Uh, first memory had to be, you know, uh, when I was – about six years old, my dad was actually a volunteer coach at a high school, and he used to have to bring me every single day because there was no one to watch me. So I was just sitting there watching the high school wrestling practices, and you know, have it after being drugged there for you know multiple months and, and years, and uh, you know, I was eventually I was just like, oh, "Dad, I want to wrestle," and he signed me up for the the kids program, and you know, took off from there. Do you remember what grade you were in when you started? I believe I was in, I believe I was in kindergarten, like, like six years old. You're from Geneva, Illinois, Batavia High School. In high school, you were fourth as a sophomore, fourth as a junior. Senior year, you won the first state title in school history, which I think is really, really cool. When you think back to that time, Michael, what was the difference? What got you over the top to be a champion? Um... I think just kind of, just kind of focusing more on on things I needed to improve in. I was a little bit more open minded in my senior year. Um, you know, just just trying to improve every year, get better. And and you know, my senior year was the COVID year, so a lot of online school going on, and I just had more opportunities to get practice time in, and I took advantage of it. Last year at North Dakota State. All-American, seventh place at the national tournament. Then you come to Iowa City. Why was Iowa City the right fit for you? You know, I, one of the one of the things I'm always looking for is practice partners, and that's that's something that is a lot here. You know, we got a lot of practice partners, and uh, and I, I really think that's a that's a big part of getting better. Just having guys to give you different feels and some people to push you. And I know as well as the coaches. I mean. Tom and Terry obviously have very great accolades and, you know, they're great coaches as well. And, you know, I'm glad to be on their team and, and have them on my side. When you look at your time, your first two years out of high school, what was most critical? Because you had a really good redshirt season. Then last year, you're an All-American. What were a couple of things you did where looking back at it, you go, yeah, that was really important that I grasp this particular aspect of college wrestling. Um. Yeah, really just making sure to not really take any time off. I'm, I was always trying to grind and improve. And um, I think an, an aspect of college wrestling is probably the hand fight. I mean, I I remember my freshman year coming in there and, you know, I came there because of Jerry Frannick. He was, you know, he was the main partner I was looking for. And, you know, I'd be lying if I say I didn't get my butt kicked a couple of times and, you know, just learning how to adapt and and, you know, wrestle to your strengths. Might be the same answer, but if you could give yourself some advice, knowing you were going to wrestle in college, what advice would you have given yourself? Uh, like in high school? In high school, yeah. Knowing you were going to wrestle at the, the top level. Um, probably to, you know, go to as many tournaments as you can, find as many as much competition as possible. Um, I think I was a little late to the national scene, like going to tournaments like Super 32 and and, uh, you know, my high school has never, like, went to tournaments like Cheesehead and Iron Man and stuff like that. So I think that going to those tournaments and really experience high, experiencing high-level wrestling is important. Looking at your tournament last year, you're a seven seed. You win your first match. Second round, you lose to Carson Hartschlaw, the 10th seed of Ohio State. And then you had to get gritty and rally on the backside to get to the podium, I think those stories are just remarkable because of how difficult it is. What did you learn about yourself in that All-American run? Yeah, I mean, it always sucks to lose. But, uh, and, you know, one, one thing my coaches were telling me is is you want to come back next year and you want to have already have been here. And you don't want to be you don't want to be the guy coming back next year and just looking to still get on the podium. You want to be the guy who's who's – looking to win. And, uh, and it's a lot easier to be visualizing that in your head if you've already been on the podium. So that was just kind of my mindset is, is, you know, just do as best as I can and just wrestle the only way I know how it's tough and get after it and 
if I'm on my game, I think I'm the best guy in the country. Experience is invaluable. You know, what? what is a thing or two, Michael, when you look back last March to Tulsa, being able to experience an NCAA championships for the first time, what's a thing or two that you felt like you really had to experience to gain a, a, an understanding? Um, just kind of how the tournament works, you know, um, just, just like the feeling, the layout, being in the tunnel. Um, I'm not really a big like environment guy. Like, so I'm not, I'm not, I don't, you know, get shaky when it comes to big crowds, but, um, just, just knowing how the tournament works It's a three day tournament. You don't really experience anything else like that. And, uh, and yeah, just having a grind every single match. I mean, every, every match is, is going to be a tough one. It's not like, Oh, you know, your first couple matches might be might be a little bit easier, and then you know once you get to the semis, it, it'll get tough. It's every match is tough, and just just knowing how to how to navigate your way through the tournament, I think, is important. You mentioned before visualizing some things. You just got done talking about how tough this tournament is. You guys can all wrestle. I always make the joke: nobody goes out to wrestle Division One because they want to get involved in something in school. I mean, these guys, you're all good. It's any given day. That's why I hate making predictions. Anybody can beat anybody. Anything can happen. It's any given day. I'm fascinated by the mental side of things because there's ups and downs. I'm sure when Frannick is, is whooping you back at North Dakota State, you got to get it together and, and find a way to come back the next day and, and attack the day with a high level of energy. What have you learned and what has worked for you mentally to be ready day in, day out? Yeah, and well, what I'm about to say is kind of contradictory, but having a short memory, but being able to remember uh, your flaws as well. You know, you don't, you have a bad workout, something doesn't go your way. You don't want to, you want to be hanging on that, but at the same time, you want to be able to rem remember, maybe write down. I sometimes I write down some things I want to be working on, and then the rest of the day I don't have to worry about it. When it comes back to practice time, I can, I can look at my note sheet and be like, hey. I, the other day, this didn't work out for me. I kind of want to work on this and and just not letting things weigh on you. Looking at the coaching staff, what is something specifically that you really appreciate with this coaching staff that's that's helped you improve and, and take things to another level? Yeah, just just Tom and Terry working one on one with me. I mean, it's I've never really been in a situation to have guys at those level, you know, at that level be a uh, be on my side and and I think just picking their brains on little details you know we all like you said we all know how to wrestle but um you know just just tiny tiny little things little places to, to adjust put your head in a little different spot but uh yeah I think just like being able to pick their brains on certain positions has helped me tremendously and and it's it's been doing good it's been going good talking with Iowa 165 pounder Michael Caliendo Michael I can tell you as a broadcaster when I walk down that hallway towards the arena, it does crazy stuff to me. I mean, there is just nothing quite like it. Describe what it's like walking down that tunnel, getting ready for battle inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. Yeah, you know, it's 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 almost it's almost like too much, and you just for me, I I try to I try to calm myself down. Some people try to try to amp themselves up, but I'm, I'm a guy who, who's already amped up all the time. Right. So I'm trying to calm myself down. All the fans are going crazy. You know, your teammates are standing right there. The flames are going and uh, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. And, and you can, you can really feel the atmosphere, but for me, it's just calm, try and calm myself and just get ready to match, get ready to go to the match and tunnel vision and just kind of do my thing. And once I'm on the mat, it's, it's uh, just kind of trying to lock in. When everything is clicking for you, Michael, on all cylinders, how would you describe your style of wrestling? Um, you know, I think I got, I think the way my body is, I'm, I'm more of a fast switch kind of guy, explosive, um, got a couple of th uh, slick things up my sleeve, but uh, mainly just, just coming at you. Uh, yeah. Fast and explosive and unpredictable. Up to this point in your college career, what's the slickest thing you've hit? What's your most memorable move up to this point? Yeah. What would be first on the highlight reel for Michael Caliendo? 
It's got to be like a super duck or something. <laughs> Had I've hit a couple of those in my day. Those, those, those always feel good when you get a clean <laughs> one. You don't even have to touch the guy. Those they look the coolest and they're, and they're the easiest to take no effort. So <laughs> those are always nice when you can pull it off. Watching you a few times already, Michael. You're fast. You got some speed. And my favorite sports cliche is speed never slumps. So, yeah, I mean, you hitting that, not surprised that you said super duck because you got some quick speed. What's something, Michael, at Iowa up to this point that has been better than what you thought it was going to be? Um, Probably just the uh... – Man, probably just like the, the training regimen. I mean, we you know it's tough. It's Iowa, obviously, but um, just like just the way just the way like we take care of each other and and it's and you know we're we're always looking after each other, making sure nobody's getting hurt. But you know we're still we're still working hard every single day, and you know that's always nice. In Division One wrestling, and I have to tell you this, and especially in the Big Ten, results matter. Okay, and the best rooms in the country have some tension. You come from North Dakota State. At 165, Patrick Kennedy is there, a Big Ten finalist from the year before. How did you navigate that situation? Yeah, you know, I mean, he's a great competitor, and I love having him in the room. And, uh, you know, I think it's it's a good opportunity for both of us both me and him to push each other and become better wrestlers. And, um, and, you know, we, we've, we've wrestled a couple of times. We don't wrestle all the time, but I think it's, I think it's, uh, we have a different, different styles and I think it's good for, to, for us to feel each other out and, you know, it'll, it'll make us better competitors for sure. 165 pounds in the big 10 and nationally is a loaded weight class. What'll be the biggest points of emphasis for you, Michael, these next four to six weeks to really put you in a position to make a solid run at the Big Tens and the national tournament in Kansas City? Yeah, just just uh getting to my offense, doing what I do best, you know, uh not letting other not 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 letting my opponents dictate the match and just kind of, you know, being loose when I go out there and doing my thing. I mean, there's not not much really to say about that. I mean, you wrestled David Carr of Iowa State. That's your only loss on the season. Mm-hmm. Or a couple other guys that you just want to get your hands on and, and get a feel for and, and compete against. I mean, we got a couple big dual meets coming up: Michigan, Wisconsin, Penn State. Uh, I think those are those are all great guys to wrestle. And I just I love wrestling high level guys. There's you know there's no no reason not to and. Um, I think it just makes me better no matter what, just wrestling. No matter what the outcome is, there's always something to learn from it. Michael, what is your walkout song inside Carver Hawkeye Arena, and why did you choose that song? Uh, It's called Godly. I forget who it's by. I just recently changed it, actually, and uh, I saw it on some montage. It sounds cool, and it's talking about, you know, being godly, so. What did you have before that? (sighs) Good into uh it's it was uh the game by Motorhead. Okay. If you could meet any person, dead or alive, and spend one day with them, who would you pick? Um that's a really good question. I have no idea. I'm not a, I'm not a really big celebrity person. Okay. Um man, you stumped me. I can't think <laughs> I can't think of anybody who I would I would want to, um, you got to work up and I mean, I just mad returned you pretty hard. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling. You're holding right me down. <laughs> um, I'll say Adam Sandler. He's funny. Oh, there you go. You couldn't go wrong with Adam Sandler. Yeah. You couldn't go wrong with Adam Sandler. What's your favorite Adam Sandler movie? Mm, uh, Grown Ups is always good. Okay. If you could have one of your teammates' techniques and execute it at the level in which they executed at. What technique do you want from one of your teammates? Uh, Drake Ayala's single leg. Favorite place to shop? hy That's a great answer. <laughs> Can't go wrong with hy What? Uh, let's see here. 
What do you like to do most away from the mat? I'm a big video gamer. Okay, favorite I'm video game? Video games. Um, Call of Duty is always good. Okay. On the Iowa team, where do you rank yourself on the video game? Pedest you know, oh, the those guys got me beat by a long shot. Who's the best? Uh, man, I heard Real Woods is pretty good at Call of Duty. Okay. <laughs> where is your favorite place to eat? If you're not going to High V to get something, where's your favorite place to eat in Iowa City? I like I like Jersey Mike's. Okay. I do too. A great place. Besides your family, Michael, what's your most prized possession? Probably my computer. Okay. You have any superstitions? Uh, I always got to wipe my shoes off before I get on the mat. Do you have a favorite quote? I do not. Okay. Oh, I you... like I like I like slow feet don't eat. Okay, I like that's a great one. That's a great one. Slow feet don't eat. Um, favorite sports team? Um, Chicago Blackhawks. You have a favorite athlete outside of wrestling? I don't really watch too many sports. Okay. <laughs> Final question for you. Would you take actually two more? Okay. You win the lottery. What's the first thing that you're going to buy if you win a big lottery? Probably a new motorcycle. Next question. Would you rather have a Lamborghini or a pickup truck? I already have a pickup truck. So really? I'll, I'll take a Lamborghini. There you go. Michael, <laughs> thank you so much. The horn sounded. I met returned you a bunch of times. And as always, I finished the period on top because we know how critical that is. But again, thank you so much, Michael. We'll see you soon. Take care. Michael, appreciate the time. Welcome to the Big Ten. We're glad to have you. Thank you so much.